Guys, welcome back to the shop. Jay Siemens here, and we are getting towards the end of ice fishing season, which a lot of people start to get excited about pulling out the boat, open water, all those good things. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm excited as well, but this is some of the best ice fishing of the year. The days are long, the weather's warm, and the fish are getting very active. One of the best things to target, and this is what I talked about earlier in my ice class at the start of the year, is you know picking your species and the type of fishing you're doing based on seasonal movements. If you want to catch a big pike, now is the best time of the year. And there's not a better way to catch a big pike than hanging a big dead bait under a tip up on a quick strike rig. So today we got a tip up, it doesn't even have line on it. I'm, I'm leading you through the A to Z's of tip up fishing. We're gonna spool this up. I'm gonna show you how to make a quick strike rig and then we're gonna go out and hopefully catch some pike on the tip up. But before we get any further, let's describe what a tip up is all about. Here's one, this is the Frable Pro Thermal, one of my favorite types of tip ups. And essentially this little spool on the bottom holds your line, when a fish starts swimming with your bait, which is sitting underneath, it pops your flag and is able to free spool. So that's the beauty of it. You've seen me use other tip up type devices. The nice thing about these is you can fit them in a pail. I'll show you right here. Here I've got a pail full. There's probably, I don't know, like six or eight in this pail. So super easy to transport. They have foam on the bottom so they don't freeze. I really do like iFish Pros because you can use your rod, but just sometimes if I need to throw a couple extra tip-ups in and I'm in a hurry and don't want to deal with packing extra stuff, you can't really beat the convenience of a tip-up. So first thing we need to do is spool this up. There's different options for line. Um, this is what I use just because I have a ton of it. Um, I will show you to the camera here. This is fly line backing, 30 pound. It's bright orange. Um, that's something we can talk about later, but. Anywhere in the 30 to 80 pound range, you're fine. Um, you know, if you use 30 to 50, there's a little more crossover using it for walleyes. If you're using 80, you may want to use it only for pike um, and, and big lake trout sort of stuff. But this is what I use a lot of the time, depending on how long your leader is, or if you decide to put a, a chunk of fluoro in the middle, then that orange maybe doesn't matter too much. But typically if your quick strike's a couple feet long and you're fishing in shallow water, I'm not too worried about the fish seeing this orange line. So you can't see it right now, but I unspooled my entire tip up to show you an example of me spooling up a tip up for the first time. So a couple things to keep in mind with this spool is this tip up line is gonna collect water. So it's actually gonna expand. So if you fill it right to the edge and it gets wet, it's gonna wanna spill over the edges and it's gonna end up being knotted and stuff. So typically with my spinning reels, bait casting reels, I'm filling it to like max capacity. Cause I, I always preach that. I'm like, you may as well take advantage of the gear ratios and everything and have it as full as possible. Cast better, reels better, all that stuff. With a tip up, you want to leave a little variance in there because when it gets wet, when it gets icy, you won't be able to fit it all on. So we're going to fill it up to three quarters, depending on how much line you want. Um, there's a couple different hacks to get around and not needing so much dacker on tip up line. That's what this is called. You could put some, some hockey tape at the bottom just to build that up. So it's not as much line you need, or you can take some cheap spool of monofilament, put it at the bottom just so you have that extra if a fish does spool. But um, we're going to fill this thing up entirely with Dacron, I got a lot of it. So um, as you can see on here, I'll show you guys on the above angle, there's a little there's a little notch right there. So we're gonna tie onto that. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick that I just started doing right before I filmed this video, but using my cordless drill to reel this thing up because it takes a long time to reel up all that line. So we are gonna take the end of our tip up line here and I am just gonna tie a uni knot in that little notch. <laughs> Not a beautiful knot. I'm not too concerned because this is very heavy line and it's not gonna matter at the bottom of all this, but we're gonna trim that tag end. Right there, that started. Just make sure that knot's strong, give it a good pull. That's your last line of defense if a fish happens to spool, if for some reason the flag doesn't go up or you fall asleep and, you're, and, and a fish takes it. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this little spindle on the end and we're gonna attach the cordless drill onto it. And that's what's gonna speed up this whole process. All right, so I have it on reverse because I want it to come off. I don't think it really matters which way. I'm gonna hold it up here. And we're just gonna start going. I gotta follow around the garage because it's all on the ground here, but we're gonna fill the rest of this up. I'm just trying to space it evenly back and forth. This is so much better than hand cranking it. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. So now I have some black stuff. Often I'm combining whatever tip up line I have around. So I have some black stuff that I knotted onto it as well. All right, and there you have it. That's a full spool. So just to show you guys there, 
Uh, that's about as full as I would want it, maybe even a little bit on the full side, but it still has room to expand and it's probably gonna still be within that edge. All right guys, before we get into making the quick shark rig, I wanna talk about something that is so important to Anytime you're targeting big fish, especially bait fishing, is just proper fish handling and catch and release because these big fish you want to release to be caught again. So I'm going to go over a few things that are very important to have before you go and do this type of fishing. And I will link all these things below. Shout out to Princess Auto. They've been partnering on my channel and that's where you can find most of these items below. They have every, pretty much every tool imaginable. So they are linked below. Uh, let's start off with pliers. Get yourself long needle nose pliers. I got, I got two pairs here, but you know, if you need to use them as jaw spreaders, um, it's great to have. You never know when a fish gets hooked bad if you need a second pair. So bring long pliers, bring two pairs. Next is some bolt cutters. This thing will save save you if you get a hook in the hand. It'll, it's good for open water, musky fishing, pike fishing too. Uh, you know, just cut the hook. If you get into a situation where the fish is hooked in the gills in a weird spot, it costs like 20, 30 cents to replace a hook. Use the bolt cutters, cut that hook out. You're not gonna regret it. And then. Hook file, this is less fish care, but just keeping your hook sharp. And then you got a bump board. Such a good way to measure your fish. This is made by Musky Bumper. I've had this thing for like, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. This thing's amazing. I'll link these guys below as well. They did the bump boards for 39 hours that I know I've got lots of questions about. But this thing is amazing because, you know, the fish isn't flopping around on the ice. It's a really easy way to get a quick measuring tape. It's better than that rusty old yellow measuring tape that you have in the, in the work drawer. Those things will all help you out. I think that's pretty much it. Let's get into rig making. So I mentioned this in, in a recent video where we're bait fishing for trout, but as far as hook sizes go, uh, cater to the size of your bait. Um, I, I would say generally people use hooks a little bit too big. Um, I, I don't even know the numbers of these hooks, but I would say they're like between size two and size four. Um, I really like the Mustad triple grips. These guys right here. A good quality hook is going to help you so much. The last thing you want is to set the hook into a 45 inch pike and see those hooks bent out. So spend that little bit of money. It, it's, it's up to you. Um, okay, now we're gonna get to the wire. There's, there's kind of two types of wire that I like to use. Um, there's the type that you're gonna wanna crimp and then there's the tieable stuff, which is really flexible and you know, it's just nice to deal with. That's what I use for fly fishing all the time or lures that I need to give a little more action. In this scenario, I'm gonna show you how I do the crimping version. If you want to see uh, a tutorial on how to use the tieable wire, Odie Clayton Schick did a, a, a great video showing that. I'll link that below. Either one's great. I think it's just personal preference and what you have available. Sometimes the tieable wire is a little tougher to find. The crimpable wire, this is 40 pound crimpable wire, is uh, a lot easier to find as long as you can find the appropriate sleeves for it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, here we go. And then the swivels. This is the last part I haven't talked about. Uh, these are Spurl micro swivels. Same ones I use in my lake trout rig, but I'd always rather, you know, play it safe when I'm cutting that original chunk of wire and make sure I have more than enough because you never know if that fish is going to wrap or what he might get his teeth into, so. All right, things are a little bit messy here. So first thing we do, we're going to take one of those crimps. We're going to slide it through. Then you're going to take the swivel, slide it onto your line, and then you're going to pass it back through that crimp. So right there, you could crimp that and that would hold, it should hold. You should always do a test afterwards and that would probably be fine. But I don't know, maybe it's just superstition, but I like to pass it through a second time if I can, which is definitely overkill. So what I'll do is I pass it through and then I'll bring it back and I may pass it through a second time. And this is just me being super cautious, a worrier, I'm not sure. And now I'm gonna pull it tight. So now for that crimp to come un unraveled, it has to do some, some crazy stuff. So there's kind of a goofy little loop there. But now you're gonna take your crimping tool and I'm just gonna pinch it twice. All right, and now I'm gonna trim it on this end. So there you have it. Um, there's different ways to do it. I've seen people um, use two sleeves to, to just have that safety factor. So you could, you could use two crimps. Uh, I like doubling it back through because even though the sleeve is made um, for, you know, this wire and everything, if you pass through an extra time, it's just gonna grip that much better. So, all right, so we are gonna put our first sleeve on and we're gonna put the hook through. And this is probably one of the quicker ways to do it. I'm gonna pass it back through that sleeve. So check this out. Now that crimp, as it tightens, that's gonna hold that hook in place. So right now we're using that same piece of wire that sticks out and it's, it's gonna get crimped in there. So we're gonna tighten that loop a little bit and we're gonna crimp it once. 
one's on the other side. So there are some quick strike rigs where that hook slides. Uh, I don't know, I think I prefer fixed. So now it's fixed. And then this chunk of line here, this remainder, that is, you're gonna kind of set the distance based on how big your bait is. So I think as, as far as our bait goes, it's probably gonna be a five to eight inch Cisco. So that distance is pretty good. We're gonna get another sleeve here. We're gonna pass it in, pass the hook through. And I'm just gonna probably do that double loop again, just for maximum safety. This makes for a little bit bulky of a package, but I don't, know, I'd, I, I don't think a pike cares when he's staring at a piece of meat sitting underwater. So now we've passed it back through there again, like I did with the swivel at the top. We're gonna give it a crimp, another crimp, and now we're gonna trim it. All right, guys, that's how I like to tie up a quick strike rig. Once again, there's different ways to do it. There's different configurations. There's another way where there's two lines that kind of spread off from the middle. It's, it's uh, Northland makes one called the Predator rig. I have a couple of those rigged up as well. Obviously really strong. Another thing I would suggest doing if you're new to this is once you're done, you know, hook it onto your, hook it onto your counter or whatever and pull as hard as you can, you know, do a couple tests. Your hook's probably gonna bend out before anything, but then, then you just know things are safe. It's worth taking that extra time. So. Um, as far as bait goes, check your local regulations. I really like using Cisco's, uh, like mackerel. Uh, really, it's just a big greasy fish in the water is, is what's gonna work. It's that big stinky piece of meat. I've heard of people catching pike on hot dogs on tip-ups, right? So uh, the pike just wants a, a protein rich meal. Um, you've seen how I like to spool my tip-ups. You've seen how one of the ways I like to make quick shake rigs. And next we get to go fishing. So we'll see you on the ice. Well guys, we made it out to the lake. Um, as far as rigging them, you don't wanna take that hook and just like jab it right in the middle like that. That's not the goal. I wanna put it kind of on the edge. So when that fish pulls, it'll rip out like that. That's kind of the key. So I'm gonna hook it light. And depending on what type of rig, this one being the, you know, the kind of the split rig or whatever you wanna call it, it just hangs a little more straight. So you don't have to worry as much about the hook placement and it'll just, it'll just hang straight there. Another thing to look at, you look close on my hands, you can see that there's scales on the hook tips. And that doesn't seem like a big deal, but you gotta make sure those scales are off. Cause if that's the one, if that's the first hook point to go into the fish's mouth, you wanna make sure it's clean, make sure it's sharp, you know, anything to stack the odds in your favor, right? So today we're fishing the mouth of a spawning bay. It's start of March. So they, they are starting to probably sit around the mouth of this. And eventually as the snow melts and the runoff starts, they'll be stacking further back into that bay. But yeah, we're just looking for these fish that are transitioning in and out. It's these natural funnels, these pinch points. We can talk more about that yet, but first let's get our lines going. We're gonna let Brandon catch a couple fish today. For the sake of speed, we're just uh, we're just gonna be using tip-ups today. iFish Pros are a little more uh, a little more time set up. I do like fighting fish on the rods, but uh, you know it's a little less gear to pack in these backcountry lakes. As far as setting the bait, I like it. I mean, you can lay it right on the bottom, but I like keeping it a foot or two off the bottom. It also depends, you know, on the spot and how deep you are, but. We're in 12 feet of water here. Yeah, we're gonna keep it probably two, three feet off bottom. If I was fishing shallower, if I was fishing in like three feet of water, I might have it like right near the bottom. So you can kind of play around with that. I think when that fish smells that piece of meat, I don't think he really cares if it's laying on the bottom or suspended a couple of feet. He's gonna come in and, and munch it, so. Oh, we got a flag! <laughs> All right, so as you can see on here, so you can you can set this, you know, if, if it's a smaller bait and you're fishing for smaller fish, you know, then you'd want to set it lighter. But if you're, if it's windy conditions and you got a bigger bait on, you might want to lock it all the way over there. The other thing you can do with heavier baits is on this, there's a little, there's a little metal loop here. So yeah, with a bigger bait, you might want to actually hook your line into the metal. And then it takes just a little bit more for that fish to make that initial jolt. But for now we're using kind of a medium size, average size tip up bait. We're going to clear the snow, drop it in the hole, set it and forget it. Right there, you can see we're dealing with a little more snow right now. You can still see the flag okay, but if it was deeper snow, we'd probably want to put an extension on there, but that'll be fine. Uh, it's boogie time. We're gonna set, I think we've got to set three more lines. So we're gonna do four tip ups for now, two for Brandon, two for me. That's a bit of rambling. Anyways, let's set some more lines. Well, we got our first two sets. We may have a flag right now. First flag and it's moving. Brandon. I'm just gonna hit him. Oh yeah. Yeah? 
we were just setting our fourth hip up and Brandon's on with the first pike of the day. Those are some nasty head shakes. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Oh wow, she's moving water. Oh. Are we gonna make this happen on the first bite? Oh yeah, he's at the bottom of the hole. Oh, oh, that's oh. A, be careful with the yeah. hooks in there. Show me. There nice. we go. That did not take long. First bike of the day. Brandon, how is it so easy? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's start. There she goes. Woo! <laughs> that was easy. That was easy. Right away. Right away. Nothing else? Okay. <laughs> we gotta get the fourth leg set. <laughs> this always happens on our pike videos. I don't know why. That was about 10 minutes in. And, and the biggest thing, when, you, when you're allowed two lines per person, so we got four tip-ups, don't put them all in the same area. We're spreading out from like three feet of water all the way up to 12 feet of water. If we keep getting flags to the deeper spots, we'll move them deeper, but it's, it's a good way to test the waters, right? Yeah, pike just love dead baits. And we're using Cisco's. Those are like five, six inch Cisco's. Uh, smaller tulipy are really good too. I know smelts, but yeah, we're gonna get rigged back up. This was in 11 feet of water, so it's good. Flag, 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 oh, flag, 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 flag. That could have been wind. Yeah, it, it looks pretty here. stationary. So out of shape. So it could have been wind that blew it off. We'll just pick it up slowly. It's not moving right now. I'm so out of breath. <laughs> Wish I was in better shape. You can see how the line sideways right now. So I can tell that he's sitting just off to the side with it. I can see him slowly moving. Like you can see the line swimming to the yep. side. I think he dropped it. Oh. Uh. Well, that just happens sometimes. Sometimes they drop the baits and that's just part of it. There's definitely a fish there though. All right, we've yet to get, we've yet to get all four lines set up. All right, fourth flag is set and we got another flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's spinning. He's spinning? Okay. He's spinning slow like a big one. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. Oh, those are some nice head shakes. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh, this is good. Come on. This is real good. Okay, now it's coming in kind of easy. Doesn't feel big right now. Those like mid 30 inches can be so spunky, so I don't have a good vibe. Oh, <laughs> that's nice fun. So right now, I'm thinking about line management. It's not that windy. I'm laying the line to the side and making sure that it's not tangled over the tip up over the scoop and just smooth movements. This is my drag right here. You know, when the fish wants to go, don't just stop him. Oh. oh, look at that water moving up and down. Come on, oh, not as big as I thought. Oh, that's a pretty huh? nice fish. Oh. Just a oh. toilet bowl flush. Oh, that's <laughs> the biggest one yet. This yep. is nice. Okay, that fish is right there. He's not going anywhere. He's just got one treble in the bottom. I'm gonna grab the tools, which are right here. Bigger than the last one. Yeah. There you go. Quick strikes out. I'm gonna switch hands. This is fat. They're getting fat yeah. for March time. You're good. All right, guys, here we go. Pike number two, and it's fat. Oh, That's nice. That's good. That's nice. real good. That is what they start to look like at this time of year. Yeah, you're good. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Probably another 30, I don't know, 33, 34 incher. Woo! This is good. This is good. We're not gonna get our other video done. We're gonna be catching too many pike. We finally had all four set, and we look up, and it was. It was up, this is good. So, so far our best hole has been 11 feet of water. Uh, that's where we caught both of our fish. Um, and yeah, the, the rig's getting a little kinked. So at a certain point, you know, you might want to swap it out. It's it's not pretty, but it's still, gonna, it's still gonna work. Always nice to keep some bait defrosting. And if you keep bait in the hole, see how that ice layer kind of peels off? That's the best way to defrost them. So when you get to the lake, take a, a bag of tip up bait and either fill it with water or drop a bunch of them in the hole, but. There you go. Perfect size bait, like you can catch any size fish. I think sometimes the bigger fish will key in on the smaller too, but I feel like if I had to pick one size tip-up bait, it'd be, yeah, it'd be like this five inch, five inch size Cisco. So with these yeah. tip-ups, they can be a little a goofy to wind in sometimes. They do have the little handle here. So what I like to do is just hold the, hold the tip up between my legs and then just crank it and keep that line as even as possible. It's not the end of the world if it's not even, but you don't want it all stacking up in one spot. So just crank and holding between my legs and it's typically the best way to do it. I'm always trying to double and triple check. The other time Brad and I were tip up fishing, you can see I kicked that big pile of snow on top of the tip up and it's just always those dumb little things that'll catch you off guard. So always wanna double check, make sure the line's free, make sure, cause if all of a sudden this gets knotted around the device, it could just break your tip up, break your line, you know? So I'm always trying to pay attention to that. Is 
There's a fish. The fish just grabbed it. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Are we rolling? <laughs> yeah, we're rolling. Okay, we'll switch. Hey. Can I hit him? Yeah. Nice. I don't think this one's as big as yours. No. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's so deceiving. It is so deceiving. And it's like right now, like right now, I feel a lot of weight. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> kind of swimming towards me right now. Wow, this is insane. Oh. He's caught on. He's, he's caught on something. Let, give him a little slack. If you oh, can. there we go. He's still on. Sorry, just caught caught on the bottom. Oh yeah. That's a nice one. Man. Oh, he just soaked the camera. All the lens is cooked. That was easy. There we go. Give him a little dunk. And there you nice. go. Hike number three. <laughs> wow, this has been good. Well, the lens is a little wet, but uh, another nice fish for Brandon. <laughs> this right. is good. There she goes. There we go. We're gonna run out of tip-up bait at this rate. <laughs> wow. That was good. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's <was> good. <laughs> okay, well, we gotta check. I wanna double check all these just to make sure they're they're hovering in the right spot, but uh, we got all four lines set right now. This is like the first time we've actually had all four sitting for more than like 10 seconds without a flag going up. So that's a great sign. Look at the fish coming in. Oh, oh. oh he just ate it. Just look at that. Oh, I wish we had that on film. Oh. Yeah, he did. Right. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What happened, Jay? Well, we were just trying to dial in uh, the live scope for our other video and I saw this mark come up and crush it. It would have been just ridiculous footage. We got another flag. Jeez. Oh. I don't think he's that big. No. It's craziness. Oof, I don't think this fish is that big. He's coming in pretty easy now. Nice. Man, they're all good size. This one's fat. All right, it took a two man job to get the hooks out. Another fat 30 inch pike yeah, bleeding good. a bit, so we're not gonna spend any time with it. Okay, we gotta get to the next one. We got a second flag. Gotta grab the tools. All right. Holy smokes. See there? Yeah, he's there. See, it's windy. Oh, whoa. He's not, oh. As you can tell, we have no idea how big these fish are every time. No. My thighs are just on fire. Oh. We need to go to the gym more. It's just at the bottom of the hole here. Nice. Nice. Boom. All right, Brandon, we got the hook, so give me a, a quick little gander. Side. All right. There we go. Nice. Quick look. Back Not the biggest. Not the biggest. There she goes. Wow, this is ridiculous. Okay, we got another flag. Hadn't had a flag in a while. I can't breathe. Hasn't taken that much line. Right. Wait till he starts moving again. Oh, exercise. I think the fish is just sitting there. Let's see if he wants to move, otherwise we're gonna hit him. It's been slow. It was furious for the first Hour and a half. Fish ain't doing much. Could be a walleye. Could be a waldo. Okay, I think we're just gonna hit it. It's small. Small. Could be a walleye or a very small pike. I'll be surprised if it stays on. Would like a walleye for dinner. The walleye. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's a nice walleye. Look at that. <laughs> just hooked on the outside. Just an aggressive, aggressive walleye. These walleyes. This is out in like 13, 14 feet here. They're all gonna be right up by our shack in a couple hours of prime time. Look at that. Nice. I like to eat them a little smaller. Like I would definitely eat that size, but I'm sure we'll catch them smaller once tonight. And uh, he's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Good. Nice gold. Yeah. All right. Oh. <laughs> Weird. So I guess the pike, pike like the morning. Well, got our cardio today. Got a little water on the lens there. Good cardio. We still haven't gotten the big boy. But we've been running around and just like any flag fishing is, is fun. See, seeing that flag fly is just, it's, it's the best. Yeah, we're coming up on prime time. So that's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> so my turn. It's your turn. Cool. All right. Well, Brian and I were just doing a little photo shoot here and I looked over and the flag was up. So I don't think it was a chunk of snow that I kicked. No, no, I saw it peeling when. Oh, I just like to see a little bit of movement. Could be a walleye, who knows. Hasn't done much. I don't think it's there. Oh, 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 oh. I just made him angry. Oh, decent. Decent. I think it's, I'm calling a walleye or a small pike. 
Look the at that. <laughs> Sun is setting. Well, eyes are snapping. We're not releasing this guy. He is coming home for dinner. Awesome. 